Hello everyone! Before I start today's video, I just want to give a thank you to today's sponsor, Parsec. What is Parsec you may be asking? Parsec is a really cool streaming software which allows you to stream your PC to many different devices. Parsec lets you access your PC anywhere using pretty much almost any device. Parsec is known for its low latency and high frame rate streaming, which also makes it great for things like streaming games. You can do all this for free by simply signing up for their service, so honestly it doesn't really hurt just to try it out. They also recently launched Parsec Warp, which for a small fee lets you stream two different monitors at once, added an improved color mode which makes colors pop and just look more natural, the ability to switch displays on the fly, and most importantly for people who are watching this channel, they also added Wacom tablet support which means you can stream from any PC and be able to connect your Wacom tablet to draw or sculpt your 3D models. I have been trying it out for a while now and I'm actually impressed at how well it works, so it really doesn't hurt just to try it out. I added a link in the video description so you guys can check it out. Hello everyone and welcome to another video, I'm 3DX and in today's video I'm going to be creating a fan art of a Fall Guys uh, costume. So I had a few requests from people to make a costume for Fall Guys, I'm not sure why, I guess it's because it's popular right now, uh, but anyway. So what I did was I first found a uh, the base model in the for the Fall Guys uh, character, and I found this one online. I think I just searched for Fall Guys model. I think I'm not sure. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you guys can get it if you want to make your own custom. I guess. Um, uh, one thing though, when I imported it into Maya, it was triangulated. Uh, which means it was probably the actual model that was used, that is used in the game. Um, and I say that because it was triangulated, usually a game engine typically triangulates the model. What I did in Maya was to get the quads back. I used the uh, quad quadrangulate tool, as well as just kind of manually uh, set everything back to quads. The reason I did that was just to make it a lot easier to uh, work with, just because it's just easier to work with quads than it is to work with triangles. There are a few triangles in, on the model, but uh, for the most part everything is quads. So that's what I did, I imported that model which I found online. Um, I think it's supposed to be the actual model that is used in the game, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going to assume that it is. So in this case, what I decided to do was to make a fan art of it, mainly a costume. Uh, so what I did was I decided to choose a turtle for it, mainly because I didn't find that there was one that already existed in the game. So I didn't want to read, I didn't want to do one that was already in existence or that someone had already done. And I found that I didn't see one for a turtle, which is why I decided to go with this. So what I did was I looked for some pictures, obviously, of some turtles. I found mostly some of the ocean type turtles. Uh, there's one picture here for just like a land, more like a land turtle. And uh, uh, which just looks a lot like a turtle's which looks a lot like some of the turtles I used to have when I was a kid, uh, but that's a story for a different video. Uh, but anyway, so I decided to gather some pictures and I just took that to Photoshop. I think I took a screenshot, took a screenshot of the uh, base model and went, went into Photoshop and just did a quick sketch of what I, was, what I wanted to do. I mean, not exactly what I wanted to do, but just to get an idea of what I was gonna do. So I wanted to separate the uh, obviously the shell and the front shell from the actual body a little bit. So that's what I did with the concept or sketch. Uh, it's really a sketch. I didn't spend too much time on it, but it's usually good just to do that just to get an idea of what you're going to be working on, and not just try to make it from your memory. So for the most part, what I did was I used the original body and uh, from there 
I created the shell as a separate piece. And the front of the shell I created from the original body and then just kind of merged that together. And then for the head, I decided to, instead of ex doing an extrusion from the top of the model, I decided to just make the head as a separate piece. The reason I did that is because, you know, it's a lot easier to work with if you have it as a separate piece because you don't have to worry about uh, how it's connected to everything else. And uh, you can also use the smooth uh, preview mode as well, which is the main reason I went with it. So I created the head separately. I created it uh, from a cube and then just kind of shaped it, used smooth preview mode and also smooth the model a little bit to add more subdivisions and stuff like that. And I just kind of shaped it using some you know, standard modeling techniques. And the thing about this is that for the most part, I don't think in the game, uh, the top of the costume really moves or anything like that. So. For the most part, I kept the topology similar to the rest of the body, but at the same time, I don't think if this was in the game, it would really animate. Except for just the movement of the, of the torso and the top would come with it. But for the most part, I think uh, I wasn't worrying too much about the topology of it, except for obviously having mostly quads, just in case. So that's what I did with the head. Then once I was done with the head, I just kind of uh, merged it with the body. I just made sure that the uh, there was a somewhat clean flow between the topology of the head and everything else. But in this case, I think that worked out pretty well. So I connected it and uh, from there, I just pretty much did the UVs. Now the model that uh, I downloaded already had UVs, pretty good ones as well. Uh, but since I did some changes to the model, I had to redo some parts. And then I obviously uh, did the high poly with ZBrush. Now, the um, I noticed that some of the uh, models from the game are relatively simple. They don't have a lot of sculpted detail. So I wanted to keep it somewhat simple as well. I did not want to overdo any of the details. Uh, because the models in the game are... Uh, they don't have many micro details or anything like that it's mostly somewhat flat colors with a little bit of shading and so i made sure not to overdo any of the sculpt details and i kept it mostly just clean um, one thing that i did notice was that the front shell was a little bit lumpy that's maybe something that i would make sure uh, to clean up just so it doesn't look too lumpy it looks a little bit more clean but everything else I think worked pretty well for the most part. Now I'm not sure if the models in the game used normal maps. I was looking at a lot of the screenshots. It almost looks like they don't, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe the normal maps just don't come out as much. Um, so that's one thing that I, was, I wasn't I was too sure about. Uh, but then I took it into Substance uh, Painter, obviously. Now I used the... Uh, stylized material that I used in almost all my models. Obviously there's a link for that in the video description if you want to learn how to make it. But I used that and uh, I did have to disable a lot of the layers because like I said I wanted to make sure I got it as close as possible to looking like this belonged in the actual Fall Guys game. And for that what I noticed is that they usually used solid colors with a little bit of shading. Now, I'm not sure if the shading is coming from the lighting in the game or if it's actually in the actual texture. Uh, from what I can see, I think it actually is coming a little bit from the texture from what I've seen. Um, so I did add a little bit of that to the actual texture just so that there's something there. But at the same time, I wanted to keep it relatively clean and then just looking like flat colors for the most part with just a little bit of shading. And one thing that I noticed is that the ambient occlusion is not too noticeable in the game model. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't have that in mine as well. And so that it felt a lot softer and not too pronounced. And then for the colors, I was mostly uh, just experimenting. I went with different colors than I did for the 
uh, sketch that I made, mainly because I thought it was working a lot better to use these colors instead. Uh, but that's pretty much the creation of the fan art for this Fall Guys guy. Um, I actually have not played the game yet, uh, but if they ever release it on like the Nintendo Switch, I'll probably play it, which is probably going to happen, I think. But this is uh, pretty much it for this video. So here is what the render looks like in Marble Set 2 back. And uh, so if you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you are new to the channel, uh, don't forget to sub and hopefully I'll see you in a future video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. So you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.